Doctor, doctor, doctor. It's been a great weekend. And what have I watched? I watched two out of the three episodes of the Arnold documentary. Mm. And I'll say this. Again, I haven't seen the last episode, but I like it a lot. It does a good job. I was skeptical a little bit, but end of the day, it's objective. And we haven't gotten to the scandalous politics episode yet, but the acting episode and the athlete episodes were both fantastic. Ricky, so I'll one-up you. I watched all three parts, and (laughs) I love this documentary. That part two, it gave me like Last Dance vibes where it just felt like you were watching in wonder of like the accomplishments of this person. Just like when you're watching last dance, like you're obsessed with watching the highlights. And the thing I love about this doc is that Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't have final cut of this documentary. He, but you hear from him for the majority of it, he's being interviewed. He's being posed the questions. And a lot of these docs that we see on these influential figures they are framing it the way they want. We saw Lance Armstrong had a doc, controversial figure. He has final cut. So is it really that ob- uh, objective, right? Is it really um, kind of just painting him in a light that he wants to be shown, him speaking his quote-unquote truth when we all know and we have our speculations and just facts regarding Lance Armstrong? Tiger Woods had a documentary. Uh I don't know if he had final cut on it, but you didn't actually hear from Tiger Woods in that doc. Here, you have someone from the outside looking at it, like looking at Arnold's life. And he's really vulnerable in some parts. And you're going to get to part three. That's my least favorite part of the doc. Um, But he's telling his truth. And you could tell he's like in pain while he's doing it. He he addresses like the politics, the scandals, uh, the affair he had and the child that he had. All that does get addressed. Maybe not to like the screen time that we're expecting, but this was electric. Like that, that having the cameos of like the different people that appear in here, Sylvester Stallone popping up, James Cameron, you got Linda Hamilton, Danny DeVito, childhood friends. They really like, leveled up in terms of who's going to appear you could tell it was like really well thought and well constructed definitely yeah i think you hit the nail on the head where yes it has the big cameos that you want to hear from or even like unexpected like you didn't think you they'd be able to get them but arnold is still like then he's the one talking throughout the doc there's Mm -hmm. no narrator like he's basically the narrator it's he's he's the one like controlling the doc like what's on the screen but not actually controlling the doc is in how he's perceived, you know? Yeah. He's just being like himself. And I am interested to see this third episode because what I have noticed is that like, he has donkeys and that he just lets in his house, you know, mm-hmm. with dogs. And they talk horses. about that in the third episode, too. Like, I feel like he's just lonely. He's a lonely guy. But you could tell, like, holy crap, this guy is an absolute behemoth. Like he is a monster, not just like looks and obviously who he is, a bodybuilder, but just like his personality. It's incredible. Um, and I'll just mention as well, I think one of my favorite parts has just been like he is a very calculated individual, you know, He's smart dude. And like they, they talked about like in the doc, how like James Cameron said, like, yeah, like he just wanted to be a star. And he said acting was only half the job for a movie. The other half was actually promoting the movie. And if you if you could see what did Arnold Schwarzenegger just get released uh, this past week, not just this documentary, but his new Netflix show, it also got released. Fubar, yeah, Fubar, yeah. So like, this is a part of it. Like, I, I, I yeah, there's no doubt he had like no control over the final say. This, or he, like you said, no final cut, but he had a say of when this was getting released. So I, I definitely just still see that today, even though he's been through all the scandals, the politics, whatever. He's still the same person. Yeah, he, like he is a marvel, dude. He is a once in a generation talent. The way he can go from different spheres and be successful, whether it's being an athlete, right? Being seven time Mr. Olympia, or it's like going into like the blockbuster sphere and being the most, I guess, profitable actor in the industry for a decade and a half, and then go on to be the governor of California. Like the, he is a truly motivational figure i can't think of another person who is 
driving themselves to success to the extent Arnold Schwarzenegger did. Like him just like saying, I want to be a movie star, going out and achieving it. Or him going to be uh, going into politics and being like, I'm going to be the governor of California. Like he wills things into reality. And uh, uh, what stuck out to me in the first episode, he was like, I vision things. I see them. And like he is the American dream, despite not being like a born in America and like a huge part of this documentary he becomes an American citizen. And then the, the third episode of this part of this uh, three part series is titled American, right? The first part mm. is like athlete. The second one is actor. Third one is just American, right? What he's done for the people of the United States. It's kind of crazy because like he's from Austria, <laughs> It's nuts. Yeah, and there's a great quote that he has too. Besides the visions, it's it's like, I was born in Austria, and I'm very proud of that. But I was made in America. Like he he's still like again, he's a promoter, man. Like I'm, he's a politician. He, he's a politician. Too, yeah. yeah, he's a, pol- a politician and a promoter, and he's always been that way. And he even said he and again, we did the Pump and Iron review. Check that out if you haven't uh, listened to that already. And they directly talk about Pump and Iron. And I, I love how like, he was honest saying, like, yeah, like, when I said that, I like the pump more than sex. Like, that's not true. Like, he's, he's just like, I was like, I'm to... performing. He was yeah. trying to prove he could be an actor in Pumping Iron, which is like a docudrama type of. Right. Thing. And it still took him a few years uh, until he can get uh, until he actually broke out as a leading man, even after Pumping Iron was so, such a phenomenon. So, yeah, I, that's what I've been watching this weekend. It sounds like you did, too, obviously. Can't wait to watch the third one. But yeah, I highly recommend. I think it's a great watch, especially if you like, again, like it's a great watch if you're interested in movies, if you're interested in like his tumultuous scandal, if you're interested in just bodybuilding, like pumping iron, that type of shit or stuff. Uh, Like I it's like for a lot of different people. And I think that's also a a nice thing about it, too. Yeah, you can hate watch it. You can love watch it. You could do whatever. Simple structure, but really effective. It hits every part of his life you want to know about. That's what I'll say about this documentary. And I think we actually nailed the pumping iron, like how it's lasted and how important it was to Arnold's career. Like that, I highly recommend you guys listen to our our throwback review from a couple weeks back of Pumping Iron. And I would last thing I want to say about this Arnold doc, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger's got to go down as maybe on the Mount Rushmore of, of cigar smokers. That was a cool thing they talked about too. How like I just thought he was a big cigar guy, but he's like actually one of the guys. Like he, there's a reason behind it. Of course, he's like promoting cigars. Like he, like yeah. And, and he also a big part of part three is that he has the cigar tent where he brings like different people to pitch him ideas while he's governor and things like that. So like it becomes like a part of who he is. And like I made a Mount Rushmore of of cigar smokers in my mind. Uh, Arnold is in the top four. But I also have Michael Jordan, yeah, Red Auerbach, and Winston yeah. Churchill. Yeah, I was gonna say Churchill. Um, those are good. Auerbach, forgot about him. That's a good shout. Yeah, I, I think honorable Michael Jordan. honorable mention. Not a real person, but Tony Soprano. <laughs> yeah, not a real person, but good mention. Yeah, uh, but they talk about the Hummer, how he was like synonymous with the Hummer. You know, yeah, like, and they go into his business side, like his real estate, his entrepreneurship. Like the dude was just in all different sectors and successful in all different ways. And like, I think the final thing I'll say is that he, like, he said this a bunch. How like he's not smart. Like he's smart, but like I think he's more calculated and driven. Like he wasn't like his parents. Like he had a hard upbringing, but like they weren't like phenomenal athletes. Like he, like he literally was just working out nonstop. Because he just wanted to become uh, a bodybuilder. He wanted to become the best in the world. He was just driven. And he was his upbringing was just all about competition with his older brother. Just being better at him than everything. <laughs> but he just had a stronger will. And was just more driven and stronger. Uh, not And then became stronger, literally. So I think at the end of the day, it's also like you don't have to be the smartest or most athlete, like God's gift ability. Like he literally has just done it himself mm-hmm. like through his drive, which is also just admirable and again there's some other drawbacks there's obvious drawbacks cons to this guy's life too which they get into which is interesting but i I just i love this doc i thought it was really interesting from all points of view and something i took away uh as we wrap up it's he's a great listener 
Like he, he relied on people that were experts in their industry. They saw the talent in Arnold and he opened his world and opened his perspective to other people and wanted to hear and learn from them, whether it be acting, whether it be bodybuilding, whether it be like politics, like he opened himself up to learn and he's a, he's a sponge. He just absorbs information and then like executes in a way that suits to suits to his true self, you know, highly recommend this doc. Last, last thing. <laughs> they did talk about the Sly Stallone Arnold rivalry in the eighties. If you had a pick right now, yeah, who would you who would you rather like career you rather be? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sly Stallone. Arnold. And like Ooh. And just movies. Just movies. Just movies. Hmm. Tough because obviously you think Rocky with Sylvester Stallone. You think Rambo. But then with Arnold, you get like Terminator. And I think wow. That's tough because so Stallone is the more, more I, I guess the most iconic character with Rocky. It's like them. It's Rocky versus the Terminator. I, you know, you could, you could I, make I an argument want, that the Terminator is more iconic. Because I, I love how the Doc actually went through the rivalry there. I, I wish they spent more time on it. Because yes, I watched a whole, episode, a whole episode based episode. on that. Yeah, and uh, they, it seems like they really cut a lot of Stallone out of it like he was in, only in it for like a quick second a couple interviews okay yeah. we're, we're, they were only at his house for like James Cameron minutes. was in a lot of this by the way he was in a lot of this but um that was I, I think I would take Arnold Schwarzenegger because I would want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger dude yeah but like I if so if it's live live Commando? I, I I would take Arnold just because pow- a bodybuilder um like I, I think it's just, just different but he's like, got a wide, wider variety of films too. You know, he does twins, a comedy. Like he'll, he'll do like a family friendly thing with Kindergarten Cop. True like Stallone, Stallone was so locked in to like action adventure, but he, uh, yeah, he's so locked into action adventure. It's like maybe it'd be nice to do something different. You know, Stallone never really made a, any type of transition. Like it really was a transition from Rocky one and two to like full on action star during the eighties. Yeah, yeah, it's just an interesting question. I think it's close. It's, Batman it's like, villain too for the worst Batman movie, but still Batman villain for Schwarzenegger. Yeah, but again, like I, I, I think that rivalry was definitely underutilized in this doc, but still great, to, uh, a great aspect. One of my favorite parts of the doc too. So again, highly recommend. And I think I'd pick Arnold too, but Rocky. It's hard to, it's hard not to pick Rocky. Wow. I know. Like that's you're, the you're, thing. You're, like you have everybody Rocky attached to you, and you. then you have Creed coming afterwards. Like it's an absolute yeah. juggernaut. Everyone will always root for you your entire life. Right. But then you're like, Rocky. You represent a city. You have a statue of a character you played in a city. Yeah. It's just it's hard because all my mind just goes to Rocky versus Terminator. Like who would you rather be? But it would just be cooler to be the Terminator, I think, you know? I'll be back. <laughs>